everyone! Welcome back to the RationalInvestor.com's Daily Brief Recap! I always like to draw that back out. Back to the... Just to make sure the YouTube page is doing its thing, so that's good. Anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, it's about uh, quarter to 11 here on the wet coast on a Monday, 25th of January. Actually, we did like a two-hour broiler chicken show yesterday with lots of Q&A from the different students. So a uh, really cool interactive experience uh, on the broiler chickens yesterday. Um, you know, unfortunately uh, for crypto, like uh, things like Bitcoin and Ethereum and stuff, uh, you know, we're at the top of whatever our recent range is here. Uh, volatility is very, very high on things like Ethereum, so it's very difficult for me to even justify even looking at a trade. Um, right now in that space, I, I just kind of have to leave it alone. So I didn't really talk too much about uh, the big cryptos yesterday. Uh, some of the smaller cryptos looking kind of interesting. I suppose we'll get to that in a bit. Um, and of course, uh, start of the week means stock market opens up and right out of the gate, boom, 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 Brian's banging out doubles right, left, and center. So, uh, you know, they want to keep taking this stock market higher, keep taking risk higher. I'm going to keep paying myself, might as well. Um, Mondays, uh, we have on, um, TRI's CTO, Chief Technology Officer, uh, Sjord, uh, just kicking it. Uh, now he's got uh, the signaling charts, uh, uh, putting annotations on the signals, uh, which is very, very hard work. Uh, and these guys have been working away like dogs, so I'm so impressed with the, the job that they've done. Lots of little bugs popping up here and there, which you know is to be expected, so... We are going through building out uh, the platform and getting it to the point where literally this this is like next level shit, man. Um, well, we're probably this probably hey, you know the irony of it all is I can see that this is going to be a billion dollar company, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, probably the one thing that we need to do is more of Sjord, uh and less of Brian as we go forward. <laughs> But uh, actually, it's kind of cool, too, because uh, what's what I see happening in the site is uh, you hit sort of like a critical mass uh, stage. And now, actually, what I'm hearing from people on the site is, hey, Brian, you know, this is my specialty. Um, I wouldn't mind coming on, you know, in the community, the daily brief broadcast and doing like a half hour presentation on this topic. And which is literally from Monday to Friday over like a two or three week period, just have different people coming in every single day doing different presentations. Uh, so I got to say, man, Jojo, you came to me in a dream after you passed and you told me we had an opportunity. You didn't say it was going to happen. You said yeah, I had an opportunity to make a meaningful impact in this world. And I got a funny feeling that's exactly what's happening here, folks. The key here for us is we have to stay humble. We have to try and remain a small fish in a big pond. We don't want to stick our necks out and you know do things like don't pay taxes or flirt with uh, regulators or even the one percent. Just you know leave, let them do their thing, and if they want to take their pound of flesh, so be it. There's not really much we can do to change that, but we'll just slowly you know educate the public. Uh, be demonstrators of best practices. Just be good people. Right? I was uh, talking in a daily brief with a uh, gang today about how I'm just so fortunate that uh, I'm surrounded by all these really good people. Like Kevin here who helps me do the daily brief. I mean, these people, they're just, they're really good people. And I don't think they get enough attention in this world. Too many fucking orange to pay assholes. Uh, they get all the attention in the world. It's my job to highlight the Jamies, the Kevins, the Sjords that are good people and doing good things and trying to make a positive difference in this world. So uh, congratulations to all you good people. And thank you for being in my life. I really appreciate it. All right, now on to crazy market talk. 
Um, you know, as uh, the breadth indicator here shows us, uh, this market's not overly happy right now. Probably the best thing to happen would be just a little bit of sideways. Just, you know, everybody just calm down. Um, and ironically enough, actually, uh, one area of the market that I'm really getting interested in is uh, war. Um, you know, you saw in history how the Germans uh, would sort of poke and prod and see how far they could push. Uh, and, you know, through the 1930s, it was called like appeasement. And uh, Chamberlain's famous, uh, you know, gaffe, peace in our time. Uh, I'm seeing the exact same thing happening with this China. And, uh, and, so, and really, it's not even Southeast Asia. It's Southeast Asia, Southwest Asia, South North Asia, Northwest Asia. I mean, it's a whole fucking area. Um... I was actually pretty proud of Mr. Biden. The very first thing, and really this should have happened from day one, is the United States should park an aircraft carrier, maybe even two aircraft carrier battle groups right in front of Taiwan. Just park them there and say, you want to fuck with us? Let's dance. Enough of this bullshit. Oh boy, there goes Brian ranting again. Um... What I'm most interested in is, ironically enough, in the West, we have a pretty level-headed approach to this. China's poking India, and they did it again. There's more fighting going on between these two countries. One of these days, India is going to go, fuck this, enough of this humiliation, and we're going to start, you know, sticking it to them. Uh, so, if anything... I, I actually really like the theme of war here over the next five, ten years, which kind of sucks, and let's hope we all live through this. And one area of the market that's really caught my attention, you notice who's at the bottom of the barrel in the S&P 500, and this is why I did all this rant and shit. This is why I wanted to go this direction. Oh, the U.S. defense sector. Hmm, coincidence? And you saw how all those oil stocks were all basically at the bottom of the barrel six, eight months ago, and they're all fucking going crazy now. What would make these defense stocks, that's Lockheed Martin, that's Northrop Grumman, what would make them rally? Oh, how about maybe new purchase orders from Uncle Sam? Well, maybe not Uncle Sam, how about Uncle Joe? And for whatever it's worth, historically, Democrat U.S. presidents love to fire missiles. Just go back and look in history. Who actually likes to start wars in the United States? It turns out it's actually Democrat presidents. <laughs> so that's kind of a funny twist. Uh, so, like I said, uh, and I was even joking with somebody online, um, you know, in Twitter feed and all that kind of stuff. I'm really warming up to this defense sector, and I might actually start going buying some defense stocks. And that's sort of like putting your money where your mouth is. You know, enough of this rhetoric, Brian, yeah, you love China, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But this is putting your money where your mouth is. I like investing in defense stocks here. So, there you go. Merry Christmas. And this is also a great analogy of how we use this dashboard, this kind of top uh, bottom rating I don't want to be investing in these things I mean if I'm a momentum player great I can uh, trade the momentum model but you know me I, Brian's a cheap ass I want to go bargain hunting so these are the kind of names actually that really are sort of the places where I want to be thinking about shopping but that's you know again that's really more there's a million different ways to skin this cat what type of investor are you and uh, how do you approach the game uh, but uh, uh, cheap ass, bottom hunting, thinking about what could get purchase orders going forward. I sure like these defense stocks. Okay, wow, that sure was a mouthful. Um, you know, another great analogy of U.S. dollar. Go and look up what happens in the marketplace 
the day bullets actually start flying in earnest. I think you're going to find the U.S. dollar index does pretty darn well. So, you know, and they also say, I mean, this is the tragedy of all this. How do you actually get a country out of recession? You know, the computer, uh, consumers tapped out. I suppose the one thing that's saving these Chinese right now is this COVID. If there wasn't the COVID and they were doing all this totalitarian dictatorship, pushing everybody around, all their neighbors, I think you could have a nice coalition come in there and kick some serious ass. But the COVID will actually probably delay this all a year or so. Uh, but uh, I do find it interesting that the U.S. dollar is trying to bottom. And, of course, if you go back and look in history, whenever the bullets actually start flying in earnest, uh, the U.S. dollar index takes off like a rocket. Everybody bails out of all risk, and they just go bury their head in U.S. dollars. And really what that is is that's a vote. Like if you go back and look at the Gulf Wars and all that kind of stuff, right? Um it's all well and good while the politicians are doing their thing, right? Capitalists are all involved, blah, blah, blah. But when the bullets start flying, what ends up happening is the markets the almost bets who's going to win ahead of time. And then they just put all their money on, on that player. And frankly speaking, anybody going up against the United States of America right now militarily, you're just asking for trouble. So anyway... Uh, so interesting comment there on U.S. dollar from a number of different perspectives. Stocks came off smartly there, um, you know, Friday, a little bit of probably options, expiry, shenanigans. And then, of course, uh, you know, how bad is COVID getting? Interestingly enough, we're getting a lot of sort of headlines now that stocks are kind of disregarding the sickness worry because they know stimulus packages and shit like that are coming. So... They don't have to worry about like things like the credit market just stopping. So I think that's why stocks are relatively well behaved here. Oil has a double top breakdown working. It's an intraday double top breakdown. I don't think it's a clothesline uh, double top breakdown yet. But nonetheless, you know, uh, usually also too, here's another thing. We're coming out of the end of the January barometer report. So the January barometer report will end here in the next few days. And we have to remember back that the uh, January barometer report right out of the gate was not happy whatsoever. And of course, you know, COVID sickness, all that kind of stuff. Um, where the hell did I put that January? So I have it over here. Yeah. Um, was this it? No. There it is. So... You know, could we spend the first quarter of the calendar year doing something like this as the COVID crazy gets crazy? Could be. And then sort of through the year, rally into the spring, sell in May and walk away. I get the feeling we're probably going to see the, the apex of the COVID craziness. This is probably around the end of June, July 4th long weekend. You know, everybody gets all vaccinated, fall in love with America again, blah, blah, blah. Big rally in through the end of the summer. And then, you know, very typical August, September peak and your sell off into September, October. It's pretty normal. And then the question ultimately here, we got a few more days left. So really what this is telling us is what does sort of October, November, December look like for this year? Um, and on balance, I mean, if we can hold these levels, who knows what the hell's going to happen here. But if we can hold these levels, then it just tells me that Wall Street is thinking that we're going to have a pretty up year. And, um, you know, I've been trying to convey that to the public, although I doubt anybody's really listening to me. Now is the time actually when you want to invest in growth. But most people are still mired in commodity investing and Burying your head in the sand and all that kind of stuff. I uh, did a really good illustration yesterday of the difference of investing in growth versus the commodity with Bitcoin and that Mara uh, uh, patent group, which is just basically a stock market proxy on crypto. And how uh, through the uh, non-growth, right, through the fear cycle, commodities dramatically outperformed. As soon as we get into uh, the growth cycle then the stocks just go absolutely apeshit. Uh, and also, too, this was a fun conversation with the kids today. 
A lot of people in the public don't realize that bankruptcy actually is not the worst thing that can happen to your stock. <laughs> Sometimes bankruptcy actually saves your ass. So here's a really good example where this company went into bankruptcy protection in here and it looks like they're trying to come out the other side of bankruptcy protection. And stockholders are actually pretty happy today. So go figure, eh? Hell, even Dr uh, Tim Draper is still alive, cocksucker. I want my money back, damn it. <laughs> I mean, I bought this thing off this W. You know, I did pretty well, banging out doubles, all that. And then the thing just fell out of bed. <laughs> right. Ah, well, what can you do? Uh, and if anything, you know, like you can see, this is my dogs list. You're going to have dogs, everybody. Just accept it. I've never met anybody in this world that was 100% right all the time. It just doesn't happen. So anyway, point here is uh, uh, how you handle your losers really uh, ultimately dictates whether you're going to survive at this game. Uh, and I still have this stock, right? Uh, it's in my registered account, so I can't even tax loss sell it. I don't know what the hell Draper's going to do. Maybe the guy will actually get his act together. Eh, we'll see. Only time will tell. Uh, you know, on the flip side, uh, are there any uh, positives on a day like this? Well, uh, bang, there's another double. Woohoo! Can't complain about that shit. Um, and um, I think also I got another double off on one of these fun little ones. Uh, yeah, this one here. And this one, they fought me tooth and nail. They just did not want to give me my fill, but I got my fill. Whew. Awesome. I mean, everything that we teach at the course, everything that we teach at TRI, beautiful W against bottom end of range, bang, free position established. Merry Fishmas! I was joking with the uh, gang, uh, I think I'm a stock hoarder. <laughs> the good part about it is these stocks just live in virtual land, right? Uh, electronic form, so it's not like I have to worry about my living room getting stuffed. But here's another example where I got free shares in this company. I don't know what the fuck these guys are going to do. On the free pile it goes. Move on to the next bus. And, of course, if it doubles again, I'll sell another half. Uh, but, you know, we even got cool little uh, setups working away. Look at that pretty little setup. You know, one low, two lows, three lows, bot levels. Uh, you guys have seen this a million times from me. So, just working away. And actually, it's kind of cool. The bot setups, they're doing really nicely here. So, there's one in the technology arena. Education, all that kind of crazy talk. Here's one in the metal space and silver. It's just working away. We made a new high here today, so don't touch it. So, you know, that's the kind of market it is. A lot of, you know, we are banging out the doubles as they come in. And a lot of stock trades that we hung on, they're just doing their thing. Just, you know, actually, I picked up this one recently. Oh, so pleased with this trade. It's, it's like I said, it's everything that we do at TRI. I'm all about best practices. So when I see myself actually doing best practices, oh, I get so pleased with myself. Here's a name from Kvarkinator we've been sitting on a while. Ooh. Beautiful looking chart. Showed this to the public. Or uh, the community earlier today. I mean, you tell me. Does this thing have any room to move up here? This is also a really good example where, you know, it might take a year for your idea to finally turn the corner and start moving up. Uh, but feeling pretty damn good about this trade. Good looking stock. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. Um... And you can see, you know, some up, some down, some in, some out. Just managing our business of trading. Oh, look at what's going on here. Actually, it was kind of weird. I slept in a little bit here today, so I didn't really do too much on the open. I took a bit of a day off here today. Uh, look at this. Actually, we just recently picked up this little bad boy. Oh, beautiful chart. I mean, you tell me, does that have any room to run here? Any room at all? I'd say we're doing pretty good. So, uh, I mean, it, it, the cool part about this uh, web uh, channel and stuff like this, you all know, I'm not going to sit here and pitch you ideas. Oh, you got to buy this, or I think that's going to happen. Fuck, I don't care. I'm just trading my own money, and I'm having a great old time trading my own money. It's, it's a blast. I mean, the rates of return are ridiculous. 
Um, so if you want to join me, you're more than welcome, but I don't care whether you join me or not. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, what I'm really here to do is try and, you know, especially people who watch this channel over time, what hopefully you see is a repetitive behavioral pattern. I just keep doing the same thing day in, day out, over and over and over and over. Just rinse and repeat. Um, just keep taking the market's money. So, well, we'll see how it goes. Only time out to hell. Man, this is a funny story. I was super jazzed about this thing here. And uh, my community talked me out of buying the stock. Oops. <laughs> It's funny. You know, I look at that and I just laugh. It just, it it's funny. <laughs> it just is. That's all it is. It's just funny. Um, actually, uh, VCIM names, right? Because we're heading back into a growth market. These names, oh, they're just beauty. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. I'll probably be coming out to you and saying, banging out a double on this thing pretty soon here. Um... You know, are you interested in the fluorite industry? Made another new high here today. You know, that's the that's the way this market is, right? Just have fun. You never know what the hell's gonna happen next. Probably be banging out a double on this one. I think my next double order is up here at fifteen and a half, so pretty close. Probably be doing some more business there. Anyway, um, what am I supposed to be talking to you guys about here today? Hmm. I guess that's uh, not that one. That one. So uh, we talked about the U.S. dollar. We talked about stocks. Uh, for whatever it's worth, I got a whole bunch of bear proxies on the books in these ETFs. If the stock market was uh, wants to come down, I'll see those positions go up in value. So I do have exposure. But if the stock market does fall apart, I am, I'm still okay there. Um. Interesting how the bonds actually did go and put in that double bottom there. So uh, this would imply that the risk part of the market is uh, getting a little heavy here and might have to come off a chunk. Like there's 38.2 on the S&Ps. That's, what is that? That's like, uh, Jesus, it's like uh, 100, 150, uh, 250 points lower than where we are right now. And the index is only 3,800. Could we see a 6, 7, 8% correction here in the stock market? Easily. And that's probably what the bonds are sort of sniffing out here. Also, two bonds, you know, inflation uh, proxies, um, they do not like when they see oil prices rise. So I think one of the reasons why the bond market is perky here today is they see that energy is trying to roll over here. Gold and silver, funny creatures. Think they're sort of caught in kind of a, am I part of the risk market uh, because inflation risk assets are going up? Uh, or am I part of the, oh my God, everything's falling apart. I'm just gonna go buy some gold and bury my head in the sand. So in a weird sort of way, gold's kind of trapped in this dichotomy um, and ironically enough, you know, since I'm a growth investor, growth, I would rather play this from the silver's perspective, because uh, silver, of course, is used more in the economy. So that's this kind of conversation. But if I see this chart and I understand it correctly, I don't know whether I really want to keep that attitude. So if this chart's moving down, it means that the economy is expanding, it's growing, it's feeling happy. There's more demand for silver than there is for gold. If this chart is moving up, then it means the economy is unhappy, things are bad. You know, like here's uh, March, right? Oh, Jesus Christ, right? COVID nonsense. Um, and uh, and the economy's, uh, the uh, industrial demand for things like silver is, uh, is weak if this thing's moving up. And you can see, I mean, is this some sort of big honking fucking W that's trying to come in here? I don't know. Uh, if this does W out and we start cranking higher, then it means, oh, shit, you know, the economy's doing bad. Uh, get ready for more pain. 
So, jury's kind of out still. I mean, I don't have a confirmed W here yet. We do have M's, and we're right down against the bottom end of range. So, the jury's still out. If you're a bull, and you're an optimist, and you're like, rah, 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 future, you would like to see this break to new lows here. <clears throat> When are they going to give me that fucking ORS fill? My or like this is another good example, right? The guys who are running this book, they see my order sitting there at 15, 15 and a half. They do not want to have to buy my stock off of me. So they're just going to go, look at, we'll wait for some retail idiot to come along and pay your offer, but we're not going to bid that uh, the price up and fill you. Because that's money out of our pockets. <laughs> you get, I mean, sometimes you play this game long enough. It's so cliche. You know, the I think I showed you earlier. I had exactly the same thing on this stock. The only reason why they gave me a fill here is because some retail chump here came up and paid my order. The market makers, they had no interest whatsoever in giving me a fill here. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, crazy capitalism. Um, all right, so back to our story. Once upon a time in a land far, far away. Uh, this one. Uh, so, Bonds. That should be a risk-off vote. Hey, Mr. Bond King guy, man, I bet you he was dying a thousand deaths there a week or two ago. He's probably breathing a huge sigh of relief right now. I tried to explain this in the uh, Broiler Chicken show yesterday. You know, people hear me say, oh, uh, interest rates are going up. I think so, but what's the rate of change? You know, um, and I walk through that 10-year yield. I think this trend is now trying to point down. It would be really interesting to see. Notice that double bottom came in right off of those lows right there, eh? So we'll see. Maybe this thing's got a little bit more in the tank here. Um, but if this does break down, and like I said, if stocks uh, melt down here, COVID, uh, gold-silver ratio goes back towards gold, that would actually support a rally in this market. Um, but if this thing does break down, I see massive support down here at this like 155 area. And really, you might even argue off of this, like, head and shoulders. one, You know, that 150 to 155 area here. That would be the reload zone of this range. So it's not really like I'm like, interest rates are going double digit. It's just more the trend. And while the trend in interest rates is down and appearing like it's going to go negative and, you know, zero interest rates, maybe the Fed will charge you money, right, negative interest rates, then you start getting into that MMT conversation and hey, money's free. We can print all the money we want. That's not real. <laughs> and Klaus is just simply trying to get you to sell all your shit to him so he can own your shit. So that when interest rates start going back up and we find, oh, gee whiz, the cost of money actually is something. Uh you're paying the rents on the shit that you sold him. You need a house to live, so you're paying rents. Well, interest rate's going up. I'm going to have to start raising your rents. If you own the asset, if you own the equity, you don't get sucked into that trap. Interest rates are irrelevant. So, you know, I live my life for whatever it's worth, neither a debtor nor a lender be. So ironically enough, this kind of image is completely meaningless to a guy like me. I don't live in the interest rate world. All these idiots that go and borrow and play the game of, uh, of the interest rate spreads and can I make more money than what the interest rate is? Great, I make money. Great, you can live that life, but you notice most of those people are bald. And if they do have any hair, go look at Mr. Powell. What color? Go look at the fucking Treasury Secretary in the United States of America. Basically a banker. What color hair is hers? I don't want white hair. I like my nice brown hair, thank you very much. <laughs> I want to keep it as long as possible. So, one easy way to avoid all that is don't get sucked into this shit. Take the credit cards, cut them up. Get rid of them. Car loans, get rid of it. Go fucking buy a beater if you have to. Rent a one-bedroom, two-bedroom apartment. Whatever. 
don't get sucked into living beyond your means. That's exactly what the 1% wants you to do here. And then once you get piled up in debt living beyond your means, then interest rates start trending higher and you are their slave for the rest of your life. Merry Christmas. All right. Well, oh, Brian's full of rants today. All right. So anyway, trade or trade. I mean, that's a W. And actually, it is coming in against the bottom end of range here. I wouldn't fault somebody if they were like, well, fuck it, man. I'll buy that and risk against those lows. It's not a terrible trade idea. But it does imply that maybe the stock market's going to get whacked here. Be careful, all you stock market risk takers. I thought it was interesting in the gold market. I was showing the kids here this morning. Uh, I'm in uh, a gold trade, actually a silver trade. And, you know, it's a blue. I, I mean, I got all my fun little VCIMers. This is more investing in structural names rather than investing in whatever industry they're in. It's just investing in companies that are structured correctly. And then what ends up happening is they vend in something that's hot and boom, away goes the stock. So ironically enough, since you know gold and silver and metals and shit like that have been very hot and sexy lately, well, a lot of these VCIMers happen to be in the metal space. Oh, Jesus, I better get another sell-off on a double order working. What do I got here, 33? Oh, still got some room there. Um, but, uh, you know, like this one, they went into the fluorite business. <laughs> I mean, did, was I expecting them to go into the fluorite business? Not really. Uh, but uh, a lot, so I've got a lot of gold and metal exposure through these names. But, uh, you know, like pure metal names, pure... Uh, gold, silver proxies. Uh, I strapped on. Ooh, look at uh, Julian's names popping here this morning. Might get a. I think we bought this thing around in the 50s. So, hey, geez, there's another thing that I might be banging out a double on here soon. But I'm talking about silver here. So get back. Focus, Brian. Focus. Uh, where the hell's that silver stock? There it is. I think I told you guys in uh, videos recently, my number one job here on this trade is don't fuck it up. <laughs> don't get in its way. Just let your money work. Um, and you can see, oh, 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 no, you're a loser, Brian. You're a loser. Oh, no, okay, you're pretty smart now. Oh, no, no. Oh, is this a shooting star? You were super smart. Oh, now you're back to a loser. No, no, no. Really, the long and short of it here is strap the trade on. You don't do anything. In this case, if we do hit 19 and a half or basically trade two new highs, then I don't want to see a winning trade turn into a losing trade, so I'll probably move my stop uh, to that scratch level. Uh, but as it stands right now, really, I still have open-ended risk down to this 1244, and there's really nothing for me to do here. But... You know, my accountant says, well, on paper, you show a gain of this, but it's just paper. It's meaningless. Uh, so anyway, that's sort of how I'm approaching the metals market from sort of the senior side, which is fascinating, too, because remember, I've told you I'm a U.S. dollar bull. There are times, you know, they call it like stagflation. There are times where you actually see the U.S. dollar index go up and commodity prices go up at the same time. Doesn't happen very often. I remember it happened back in the early 90s. But what I guess the thing that bothers me most right now is that the Federal Reserve, uh, in all of their public comics of late, has said, expect inflation. Inflation is coming back. We are going to do everything to jack inflation. And now they're even saying, expect a huge surge in inflation here because of this COVID crap, which is total bullshit, but it's the bankers fucking us over as usual. But they're actually saying, expect a massive surge in prices here over the next year. Is that not inflation? What the fuck are these assholes doing to us? Um, but it's okay if... The loaf of bread goes from like $5 to $20 at your grocery store. It's not inflation. <laughs> Come on. 
I mean, these fuckers, they should all be taken out and shot. And we got to start the whole goddamn Fakazi from the start. And this time, can we please pass some sort of fucking law written in blood saying the bankers are not allowed to participate in the money system? Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. There's another rant. <laughs> I, it's funny. I actually got a full night of sleep last night, and now Brian's full of piss and vinegar. <laughs> But anyway, long, I mean, you know, the worst part about this is the global economy is just going to get fucking destroyed here. I don't even know if the global economy is ready for this. But anyway, that's just my hunch. But uh, I, as I said yesterday in the Broiler Chicken Show, you want to th know what I think is going to happen here? Go and look at your U.S. dollar index from 1980 through 1985. That dollar index went fucking absolutely insane. And that's actually what I'm bullish of right now. <laughs> there you go. Merry Christmas. Oh, goodness. Um, am I going to get through this video? I've been blabbing away for about a half an hour here, and <laughs> we haven't even gotten halfway through. Oh, God. I should probably wind this up, but uh, anyway, I, I showed you banging out doubles this morning. Little ones keep paying us. I'll take your money. Thank you very much. Uh, we don't really have any breakdown here just yet, so if anything, we got to you know wait for M's and stuff for us to tell us this frivolity is over. So it's not over yet. Um, unfortunately, though, you know, in my comments about Bitcoin recently, I think are still the same. It's not really like I'm bearish of Bitcoin. It's just that I'm unbullish. Which means, you know, and really looking at this chart, you don't really even see that. Well, you got to look at images like this, right? Hey, you want to be bullish on Bitcoin. You know, back here, Kevin and his fucking just insane killer buys. But, you know, there were W's and shit. And then, you know, we had like Davo signals fire through here. And then I remember there was like a Bollinger Band buy signals through these uh, levels. That's when you should have been all over this shit. Coming in here... You know, and the worst part about it is through this whole period, I was like, oh, God, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. And, you know, some people are like, well, Brian, you know, that's like 20 G's. That's 40 G's. I could have doubled my money. And you told me, don't touch. You're an asshole. You're a loser. Fuck you. Unsubscribe, uh, hate mail, whatever. But the reason why I say you can't touch through this is because of this. So... I have no idea how this is going to play out. You know, as in videos yesterday, I kind of showed you, you know, sort of keep you honest levels. Looks like 23,000 is probably a good keep you honest level right now. Uh, and, you know, if this Fakazi nonsense continues, 10 trillion, 20 trillion, 100 trillion, who knows? Do the numbers even mean anything anymore? Maybe uh, lots more money printing and this thing actually just goes sideways and we start a new bull market. I don't know. <clears throat> but uh, for me to be thinking like that, I got to start seeing some market structure here. So we got one low. Great. Give me a second low, then a third low. Let's break this trend line. Let's get W's on the other side of this trend line. Then we can start thinking bull again. Right now, just total hands off. That's that's unfortunately how I. That's the only message. Just hands off. And uh, had you bought down here, I sure hope to hell you were paying yourself on the way up. And if I did want to be a buyer now, I simply take my reload zone tool, investors that is, um, and you can see off of this range right now, I can start getting interested. Between and I like this ten thousand area that speaks to me somewhere between eight and twelve perfect, but you know I wouldn't even fault you if you said hey I'm gonna start nanny nibbling coming in at eighteen and just you know do a little nibble at mountain. My hunch is mountain probably does something. You know the worst part about this is I actually think for two thousand twenty one this thing's not going anywhere. Um, I think for the year of 2021, we're just going to bang around in here against 38.2s. And then, you know, after everybody's lost interest and then this story's new, or maybe some politician comes out and bans Bitcoin, China ban, all that kind of shit, then you get your dump 
well after the fact. All the public totally bought the story hook, line, and sinker. They're in. They think 25 is the bottom, and now we're going to knock it in half down to 13.14. That is so cliche from the market. It's not even funny. So that's kind of what I'm seeing going over here. So over the next year, is this kind of an asset that's, you know, weekly W's against the bottom end of ranges, W's divergences? No. So ironically enough, you know, it's kind of weird, but really I should stop talking about Bitcoin. There's nothing to do here. This thing's a waste of time. It's a waste of my energy to be talking about this thing. Well, what did he just say? <laughs> That's the easiest way to get some unlikes, unsubscribes, damn thumbs down. Fuck you. <laughs> Day traders, eh, you're just doing your thing. It's interesting, this last little M, awfully steep trend line. Maybe that's sort of why it failed. It looks like it failed. So, eh, shit happens. Walk away. I'd say people who traded this trend line system, they got one, two, three, four, five trades, four winners, one loser. What's that? 80% accuracy. Uh, if a professional trader was trading this and they had to book that loss, frankly speaking, I don't. I wouldn't have a problem with that. And oh, by the way, this happens all the time. Notice this trend line. If we am out here, uh, then that means you got to go and strap on another short, right? Below the trend line. So we'll see what happens if we can W out on the top side of this trend line. Maybe away we go. I don't know whether I would really consider that a W. That doesn't really look very W-ish to me, right? M's, we want to see they look very well defined. So that I like this M. That wasn't bad. It's just maybe this was just asking a bit much because we did come down an awful long way. Is this a bigger W that's formed here, taking us up into this level up here? Sure. You know, in fact, if you got a nice little W here, we'll keep an eye on this. Well, you know, our little trend uh, line trader, maybe we'll hunt that W and see how it plays out. Uh, the bottom line here is this kind of trading, you should just sort of set it two to one. If you're going to sell half at that objective, take a partial profit, stop to scratch on remaining to leave yourself open in case the thing just absolutely pukes out, fine. But if you just took the full two to one and just said, hey, I'm just running my plan and I'm just going to take the market's money, okay. You know, again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. All there is is sort of best practices. Those would be the two sort of best practices way to look at this, in my opinion. I mean, hell, you could sell one quarter of the position, move your stop to scratch. You wouldn't break even. Uh, well, actually, yeah, you would make a couple bucks. But actually, I was trying to explain this to the uh, kids in the video here today. Uh, and I was even ranting to you guys earlier. Keep this as simple as possible. You know, I like buying W's on divergences at bottom end range. It's a simple, simple setup. I like selling at 50% rules. Simple. Keep it simple. Uh, I like, you know, I'm not going to try and pick tops or bottoms. I'm just going to sell half of this position every time it doubles in value. Simple. Keep it simple. So the simpler your trading is, probably the better. I suppose the only other thing to talk about here this morning, poop coins. Poop coins, poop coins. Taste great? No, no, they don't. Uh, mind you, I've never tasted a poop coin, so I wouldn't know what it actually tastes like. Um, you know, uh, interesting to see Ethereum actually busted up to new highs there overnight. And I think I kind of told you guys recently, this is an absolute mess to me. It's got trouble written all over it. There are no trades here for me. If you did have the balls to come in and buy your W's, you can see the goddamn W. It's as plain as day down here. Uh, maybe you were botting one low, two lows, three lows. All right, I can start hunting longs. Whatever. You should be spoon feeding, taking profits. You want to buy a put? I mean, hell, I bought some puts here just to protect my ass. Obviously, that wasn't a very good idea. But that's the good part about puts, right, is it's just the money that you put into them. That's the maximum risk. So they work great as insurance policies. Uh, but is there either a long or a short setup through all of this for me right now? No. And what 
kind of irks me a little bit, right? If we think higher highs and higher lows defines a bull market, then we can start doing fog and bomb levels. And son of a bitch, look where the hell these things come in here. Look at these numbers. I do find it interesting off of the close lines, we're getting fog and bombs that line up nicely with the top of that parking garage. So I think the market, if it wants to fucking go ape shit, it wants to shoot for this. What is that? Yeah, 2,500. I like that number. It's a big fat round number. That would make sense. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I, do you actually think you're going to be able to buy and sell through this event here and actually pick those tops and bottoms? Good luck. That's going to be the CME floor traders, face rips straight up, margin calls, you know, just ridiculous uh, capital outlays. Risk is going to be massive. Uh, all I would say is if you did have the balls to buy off the bottom, just make sure to have orders working to sell so that if this does happen, then, hey, at least you can take advantage of it and you make some money out of it. Uh, I got a funny feeling a lot of kids in the crypto space are going to try and outsmart these guys through this move. And just like this, they're going to have their hearts broken. Uh, really simply put, unless you are a serious market veteran through this kind of market, my professional advice to you is don't touch this. <laughs> When was the last time you actually heard some Brian actually say that to you? I don't give you guys advice. This is all edutainment. I'm giving you my professional advice here, 30 years in this business. Unless you are a vetted, pro, funded, prop, whatever, trader, and you, are, you know your shit, my advice to you is just leave this alone. Of course... <laughs> That's the last thing anybody of you, anything you you want to hear out of this, right? Um, DeFi, obviously, uh, well, actually, this is shitcoin index. I think there's a bunch of DeFi stuff in this. Yeah, same kind of thing. I mean, there's no setups for me here. This is just a mess. Um, that's fine. You know, I just don't do anything. All right, sit on your hands. So what? You know, uh, what does Brian uh, try and do? Well, you know me. I try and come in and buy against bottom end of ranges. Got a free position. So if they want to take this fucking DeFi nonsense higher, okay, fine. I'm good to go. I'm in there. Um, hell, I even forced myself to step in on this Kusama. I don't even know if this is a half-decent trade. I mean, at some point, this thing looked like a train wreck. But, yeah, there it goes. That's that sort of nanny nibbles kind of approach. Um... Try and force yourself to come in against bottom ends of ranges. Don't take too much risk. So if this kind of shit happens, it's not the end of the world. And, you know, what is that? That's uh, 21. So at 42 up in this area, I got to let half of this go and just get that free position. So, you know, I mean, look at that chain link. There's a beautiful W. Is this a W here today? No. Why are you buying here? I don't know. Some guy on the internet told me it was going to go to the moon. Do yourself a favor and hunt those W's, man. It sure makes this game a hell of a lot easier. Look at Dot. Look how pretty that W was. I mean, just so textbook. So, Okay, I think I'm going to finish the rant at that. Um, hope you got some value out of this. This is going to be a pretty challenging environment for 2021. I'll tell you that much by crackers. When the market does afford you the opportunity to pay yourself, for God's sakes, pay yourself. So, um, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. No, None of us know what's going to happen. Don't get into the business of predicting the future. Trade your setups. If the markets work in your favor, great. Pay yourself. Rinse and repeat. Come back and play the game again tomorrow. You know, that's this kind of thinking. The money's sitting there. Question is, do you want it? <laughs> Hunt them W's. All right, everybody. Have yourselves a great day. All the best. And bye for now.